Your Honor would like to save all logistical questions to later. We are under some pressure to sort of finalize travel arrangements, and I have a proposal for all of that that I want to verify is um, acceptable to the court, but my guess is that you would rather us talk about that later. I think at lunch will be a good idea to see when we're done, if that helps. I don't know. That's soon enough, then that'll be. That's why I just I just wanted to raise that because again I'm getting all these questions about when can we when can we do this when sure. can we do this and I'm having to say well we can't do it until I make sure the judge is in agreement with what we're proposing um, but I know that there's better parts of today than right now to probably have that conversation. Let's see where we are around midday and then we ought to be able to address some of those things. Thank you. All right, very good. Let's uh, bring jurors out and ma'am, if you'll resume your seat at the witness stand. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I believe we're ready to resume with direct examination of Agent DeHaan. Uh, Agent DeHaan, do you recognize you're still under oath, ma'am? Yes, sir. Very good. And Ms. Shakita. Yes. Agent DeHaan, you had talked about the results of your third. I'm calling it a submission, but the third report that you did, which included the clothing, which I've taken away from this morning and you were resolved to submit it. Which included the clothing, which I've taken away from this morning and your results in that regard was that you couldn't find any um, indications of blood from your presumptive test on any of the clothing, whether it was shoes, shirts, or the hat. Is that correct? That's correct. And you talked about doing the swabs and had indicated that the fabric impression swabs, um, several of them, did not um, yield any DNA profiles. Is that correct? Two of them, yes, okay. ma'am. I want to walk through um, specifically what I showed you earlier starting with State's Exhibit 190, which is listed as CCBI's 27, which I think is your item 7, is that correct? Yes. And item 7, previously by Agent um, Gold, State's Exhibit, excuse me, 190, she had previously testified when it was entered into evidence that this swab was from a fabric impression from the interior sliding door. Specifically, what were your results on the swab from the interior sliding door? That no DNA profile was obtained. And then you said that you analyzed um, State's Exhibit 191 that's also listed as a swab from a fabric impression, but was listed as coming from the deck railing by Agent Gold. What were your results about the swab 
from the fabric impression on the deck railing. That a partial unknown male DNA profile was obtained from this swab that does not match the standards that were submitted, which is the ones from Ms. Jones, Ms. Redden, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Anthony. And when you said a partial unknown male, I think yesterday you said, I can tell it's a male, but it didn't match either the male suspects. Is that correct? Correct. And did you have any other standards or comparisons against which to test it in this case? No, those were the only four standards that were submitted in this case. And again, this one was listed as being from outside on the deck railing. Were you given some information about potential people that might have been on the deck the morning of the homicide? Uh, only the short synopsis that came with it that uh, other people were inside of the apartment, um, but not who would have been on the deck. And so, did you, for example, when they give you an initial synopsis, did they indicate that there were construction workers out on the balcony? Not specifically on the balcony, but that they were present uh, in the apartment. And were you aware that these were newly constructed um, apartments? Yes. States Exhibit 192 listed as um, Agent uh, Gold's 35, I think your item 9. Again, did you um, analyze this one? I did not analyze that one. And why did you not analyze this item? And I can pull it out here, 192A. It is not a swab. It is actually a lift. Um, and this is not something suitable for DNA analysis, so it was not examined uh, because of the type of evidence it was. Moving to your next item, which is State's Exhibit 172, excuse me, 172, which is listed in a previously um, indicated swab from daughter's bedroom doorknob, which earlier Agent Gold had said they took a touch or contact DNA swab. What were your results, if any, on the swab from the daughter's bedroom door? that no DNA profile was obtained from that swab. Next, States Exhibit 2... Um, sorry, 218, which is your item number 11. Did you analyze that one? I did. And what, if any, were your results on this one, which is indicated as a swab from the master bedroom doorknob? That the examination of this touch DNA swab revealed the presence of one allele, which is of insufficient quality or quantity for inclusionary purposes. No conclusion can be rendered as to the contribution of the DNA profiles obtained from Ms. Jones and Ms. Redding. And the DNA profiles from Mr. Smith and Mr. Anthony were excluded as being contributors to this allele. And so I think yesterday you said basically there just wasn't enough there to do anything with. Correct. The for inclusionary for purpose. Inclusionary. Yes. Okay. You couldn't rule out Ms. Huggins Jones, is that correct? Correct. I can't render any conclusion on her. Okay. And then States Exhibit 40, sorry, CCBI 46, States Exhibit 161 which Agent Gold had indicated was a fabric impression taken from the master bed um, post. Did you analyze this, your item 12? I did. And what, if any, results did you get with regard to the swab from the fabric impression taken from the master bedroom bed post? No DNA profile was observed from that swab. And so with this third total submission, um, other than the unknown partial male were you able to positively match any DNA to any person? No, ma'am. And um, several of the items, specifically the swabs from the fabric impression and the touch DNA, other than the one on the master bedroom door, you weren't able to get a profile? Correct. Did you have yet another submission in regards to the homicide case? Yes, I did. And what items? did you receive in this in that particular um, request? A swab from the daughter's bedroom door, a swab from a white purse, a swab from the victim's iPhone. And were you asked to make comparisons against any um, known standards or yes. known folks? Yes, I again examined for indications of blood and then uh, developed DNA profiles. And so starting first with the swab from the, well, may I approach Judge? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to show you several items that were already introduced into evidence right here. 
first states exhibit one seventy one which is listed as the blood swab from a daughter's bedroom door already in evidence. Is this the swab that you received looking at it? Yes, ma'am. And second, States Exhibit 199, swab from the white purse um, already in evidence. Is this an item that you received? Yes. And last, swab from um, item 87, which is also listed as the victim's iPhone. Is this the third swab you received? It is. And using those three items, tell us what you did with um, the uh, first thing that was done on each of them was a visual examination and then a chemical examination for indications of the presence of blood. Um, after that, then the swab from the daughter's bedroom door as well as the swab from the white purse, um, a sample was taken for DNA testing. Uh, nothing further was done with the swab from the iPhone. And why did you not do anything further with the swab from the iPhone? The swab from the iPhone failed to reveal chemical indications for the presence of blood, uh, so no further, oh, I'm sorry, it was tested with DNA. Um, it failed to reveal the presence of blood, however, I did take a cutting for DNA. And how, and how do you take a cutting? Oh, from the swab? From the swab, right? yes, ma'am. And you weren't actually provided the iPhone with the swab? No, <clears throat> yes. So the first two gave chemical indications for blood, that is the swab from the bedroom door and the swab from the purse? Yes, ma'am. And you did DNA processing in all three? I did. Can you tell the um, jury what your results were first, starting with the swab from the um, child's bedroom door? The DNA profile obtained from the swab from the daughter's bedroom door matched the DNA profile from Ms. Jones and does not match the DNA profiles obtained from Ms. Redden, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Anthony. And earlier, or uh, yesterday afternoon, you had indicated fairly early on in the process of all of the examinations you've done, you had developed a DNA profile for Ms. Huggins Jr. Yes. And then at some point during the course of your investigation, you were provided with the buccal swabs from Mr. Smith, Mr. Anthony, and Ms. Redden, is that correct? Yes. And once you developed the DNA profiles from those three suspects, were you able to compare them at later time? Yes. And so in looking at the swab from the bedroom door of the, vic I'm sorry, the daughter, and you found a match to Ms. Jones and to none of the other three suspects. It matched the DNA profile that I obtained from Ms. Jones' standard. And looking now to the swab from the white purse, what were your findings? That the DNA profile obtained from the swab from the white purse matches the DNA profile obtained from the standard from Ms. Jones and does not match the DNA profiles from Ms. Redden, Mr. Smith, or Mr. Anthony. And to be clear, those two that you just referenced, the daughter's bedroom drawer and the white purse, gave you chemical indications for blood? They did. The last item there, the swab from the uh, victim's iPhone, you said that that did not Correct. under your testing, but you continue to try and test for DNA. What were your results in that particular mm -hmm. item? No DNA profile was obtained from the swab from the victim's iPhone. Was that the last set of items that you were asked to examine? Yes. And I know that we've talked about a burglary case and a um, homicide case, and in each case you had several submissions. If you could, and if I'm a approach judge, yes. to recap the areas where you found Ms. Huggins Jones's blood, or a match, I'm sorry, to the DNA profile of Ms. Huggins Jones, in the burglary case, where were those items? The in the burglary case, the, swab, the two swabbings from the interior windowsill and the two swabbings from the exterior patio rail. And I believe those were all in the first round with yes. the downstairs, or the burglary, excuse me. And then in the homicide case, where were the areas where you found the presence of Miss Huggins Jones' blood? Or, sorry. A match to the DNA profile is the way I'm sure you would like me to say it. <laughs> the swabbing from the exterior deck rail and swabbing from the master bedroom wall. The root that was removed from a hair in her pubic hair combings.
and then the two swabs that I just talked about from the daughter's bedroom door and the swab from the white purse. Um, in addition, did you, were you asked to perform any more analysis on any other items connected with the burglary or the homicide? There were no additional submissions. I believe all of these items are already in evidence. Judge, I don't believe that the sexual assault evidence collection kit states exhibit 30 has been moved into evidence, but to the extent that it has not I would ask you now admit it at this time. Any objection? No, sir. It's allowed. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, in an, without getting too far into the weeds, but just in an effort to maybe explain a little bit more of what you explained at the beginning of your testimony yesterday, you explained that the, um, the, the type of testing that you do tests uh, for only certain locations on the DNA strand. Correct. So you explained to the jury that virtually all of our DNA is the same. Uh, and so by testing at certain locations on the DNA strand, you're able to do a statistical analysis of how likely that DNA is to a standard that you have. It's not how likely it is to the standard. It's how common or how rare that, pro that unknown profile would be in the general population. So we're looking at the unknown profile, not the comparison to the standard. Okay. So, and, and you're looking at that unknown profile at a certain number of locations. Yes. So, for instance, one of the things that you've told the jury is that with some of these samples, you could tell, for instance, that it was either male or female. Correct. And that's because one of the locations you look at is the section of the gene that identifies mm -hmm. the sex of the individual. Right. One of the areas we look at has a male determination um, part of it. Right. So that's just... One easy example that they would understand from the course of the testimony about the fact that you're looking at specific locations yes. that help to show the differences between people as opposed to the similarities between people because that helps you identify the unknown profile. Correct. Um, now, you have talked here today, and we've also heard at other points during the evidence about... Um, the, the presumptive testing that you do, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you described that, um, you described that test, uh, and you didn't use any name for it, um, but I, it's the Castle-Meyer test or, or the phenolphthalein test, is that, that turns pink? The screening test for blood? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so that is, again, a, a test that will basically tell you whether there is a good chance that that item is blood. Yeah, it's a, it's a highly indicative test, which means it doesn't cross-react with a lot of things, but it does not conclusively identify that blood is present. And the, um, the state crime lab's protocol is that once it's been determined that it is very likely that an item is blood, um, confirmatory testing is not done, but rather that sample is then tested for the presence of DNA. In, in most cases. There are some cases where we will go on to confirm the presence of human blood, but in this case, the sample was preserved so it could go on for DNA testing. Um, and so when, so your lab is the lab that would do confirmatory testing um, to, to show uh, conclusively whether or not something is human blood, but oftentimes the, the decision is made rather to do the DNA testing because of the information that can be gained from that? Either the information gained or uh, the confirmatory test consumes part of the sample. So if DNA testing is going to consume sample and the confirmatory test is going to consume sample, we try to preserve as much sample as we can, um, especially if it's a small amount of sample, in order to get the best chance of getting a DNA profile. And so when you get those... Uh, Swabs, for instance, in that last um, in that last report you did, where uh, the 
locations of the samples were from the swabs on the bedroom door and the white purse and the iPhone? Yes, ma'am. Um, you get that with some information that either comes from the Raleigh Police Department or the CCBI. Correct. When they submit evidence to the laboratory, it comes with submission paperwork uh, that gives us basic information about the, the items. And you, when you got those items, did you have indication from that that those had all tested positive with the presumptive test prior to being sent to the lab? I did not know that they had been previously tested. Uh, the envelopes were all labeled as suspected blood swab, okay. but um, I didn't know that they had been uh, tested. Because you always do your own screening test at the state crime lab. Yes, ma'am. So you don't re rely on the screening test that is done previously by another agency? No, ma'am. Um, and with your screening test, the iPhone, for instance, did not show the chemical indications for the presence of blood when you did the screening test? That is correct. Yes. Probably been asked and answered, but you did um, a total of, you did two um, series of tests from the burglary scene, correct? Yes. And then you did, a, 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 I'm afraid I'm going to get it wrong, but I think you did a total of four from the homicide scene? Yes. Um, and in all of those tests, you had a number of items that were, were inconclusive or all of the people were excluded? Either I didn't have a DNA profile, um, I don't know that I had anything that everyone was excluded from. Um, so the partial unknown male, for instance, oh, everyone was excluded yes. from that. Um, and, or you, in some cases, you had a, a match for um, Melissa Huggins-Jones. To the standard from her, yes ma'am. Correct. But there were no matches for anybody else for which you received standards. That is correct. I don't have the question, John. Redirect. All right, thank you, ma'am. You may step down. I'm collecting these items. The next witness is the witness about which we had had an earlier discussion, and the state's request would be that her testimony not be published. Okay, very well. <laughs> 